bring the whole Christian community together in unity to focus on missions and share their visions while presenting opportunities for those individuals who are seeking an outlet for their own hearts calling into missions. That, in a nutshell, was the vision of Dr. Bill Fiji and a few others when they first proposed the annual gathering called Mission Fest Toronto, now celebrating its 15th anniversary. Dr. Fiji is currently the president of the Associated Gospel Churches. Prior to that, he was the national director of Overseas Missionary Fellowship. He's been a pastor, father of four, grandfather of five. Jude Hodson built a large Mary Kay business for over 21 years until God got her attention. And in her words, she went from pink Cadillacs to learning to love the poor, the homeless, and the least of these. She's now the director and event coordinator for Mission Fest Toronto. We want to welcome both of you to Full Circle. It's great to be here. We have a very full yeah, circle. Yeah, I'm like, right I was going to like cuddle into Jude here, and I'm thinking, Bill, look at you. Yeah, <laughs> lucky, lucky Bill, man. you are that's surrounded. Yeah, that's Bill, you're great. surrounded by a bevy of lovely, lovely ladies. <laughs> lovely ladies. That's a lot of estrogen. Right? It is a lot of estrogen. <laughs> okay, now, Jude, I want to start with you because I know that actually it was through a connection through this ministry. Uh, in 2001, where God really got your attention and said, I'm going to take you in a different direction. Take us back to that journey. That was an incredible uh, trip I went on with uh, David Maines mm -hmm. and David Damien called The Journey of Hope with 500 Canadians to pray in Israel. Mm -hmm. And during that uh, trip, God really spoke to me about whose kingdom am I building? Am I building my kingdom or am I building His? And I had to make a decision to stop what I was doing, which was building my own kingdom, mm -hmm. and uh, to walk away from it and start waiting on him. It was a, a fairly long period of time while I waited um, patiently to hear what he would have to say and what would be next in my life. And he led me to a place called Followers Mission in downtown Toronto and a place called Tent City. And uh, it was a really great a couple of years of my life, learning to uh, trust God for everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that was the catalyst totally. that really started you or from being kind of, um, I don't want to say material focused, but oh, totally. you know, you were building, <laughs> like you said, you were building your own kingdom to really having God's heartbeat yes. in your heart and, and I mean, what's I, important to Him. I still love the Mary Kay world. The women are incredible. I've stayed friends with all, all of them and it's a terrific company and the whole thing, but God had something different for me and I had to be obedient. You know? Was there a financial hit to that? You know, that you went from like, you know, I mean, Mary Kay isn't just about, you know, Mary Kay isn't just about, you know, like it's, it's also a look, it's, it's a sure. way of presenting yourself to the world. Yeah. And then like to have all that taken away, was, did that hit your identity in some way? Like how did you get through that? Well, um, it was a challenge at first because I, I truly believe that women um, have a lot of potential uh, to do great things. And you know, you, you find out that there's such huge needs in Toronto and all over the world. Mm -hmm. And you wanna fix stuff, it's just in us to, to fix stuff. And yet, God took me to Followers Mission where I didn't wear makeup. <laughs> and um, I wore a t-shirt that said, Jesus is Lord. And um, wore an apron and made coffee and sat with people who, who uh, I learned to love. I had to just kind of get over the, the smells and, and, and the different mm -hmm. things and learn to find out who people really are. And there's some amazing people who are homeless in our city. And truly, um, they are wonderful, incredible people, well-educated, some of them. They've hit that downward spiral and they've ended up, you know, at a hostel or in a tent somewhere. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I still go down to Followers Mission. I get the, the privilege mm -hmm. to preach there once in a while still, and it's, it's terrific. It's absolutely terrific that there are little outposts like that all over the city. And don't yeah. you learn so much from people? Oh my gosh, yes. People? And, and it's so important that, and I know you've made that, it's not an us and them mentality, yeah, but right. it's that this is my family yeah. living on the Truly. street. We really need a mindset change. Absolutely. Yeah. And Dr. Bill, Just this, call me Bill. Bill, Just you know, Just this Bill. must do your heart good to see this is the fruit of what you and those other pastors started, you know, back in 1993, I believe, is when you first started yeah. getting the... 1993, actually, Philip Wood called me, and I need to just say that because he mm -hmm. called me and he said, well, let's meet and let's eat and let's talk about this because Mission Fest had been going on, Missions Fest had been going on in Vancouver 
for many years, and all of us had taken part in that and watched it grow. And he called me, we, uh, we met, and we said, you know, can this happen? I said, I don't think it can happen in Toronto for a number of reasons. <laughs> number one, people in Toronto do not like doing things together. <laughs> If you recall, true. Mission, so true. Yeah, cause Mission Toronto <laughs> had been going on and they tried to keep that going after Billy Graham mm -hmm. was here and I was part yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. and, and it just didn't work really well. And I thought, you know what, I'm not sure that we can actually bring people together in the Toronto GTA area. Mm -hmm. Everyone's doing their own thing. We're so busy. And uh, the churches um, in the, on the West Coast, the churches tend not to have their own missions conferences as much as we do. And so I thought, you know, are we going to be competing with the churches? So Philip and I talked about that over lots of lunches, let me tell you. Um, and then finally we said, let's give it a try. So we pulled together some other guys. Your dad. My dad. Your dad, yeah, who is dad. just a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous worker. So the three of us together, and then Albert Y came in and yeah. a bunch of other guys. And what we decided was it couldn't be like Vancouver. It had to be different. It had to, be, it had to have its own deal. Not to make it that much different, but it had to have its own focus. So we called it Mission Fest, mm -hmm. not Missions Fest. Uh, particularly because we wanted to not have it just overseas, but also here in the Toronto area and in, in Canada. So we, what we did was we basically said, all right, let's, let's try something. Um, we got in, involved with John Hall at People's Church, John Vissers uh, at uh, uh, downtown at Knox Church. And actually John, uh, uh, both Johns and myself, called 20 pastors of the leading churches in the Toronto area, got them together at Tyndale, and we basically asked them that question for about three or four hours, you know, would this ever work? And they said, yeah, I think this will work. Mm -hmm. So we, we began. Uh, we began at People's Church first two years, and after that we moved down to downtown in Toronto Convention Center, and um, it's been history since then. And you've then. weathered blizzards and changed oh, the blizzards oh, yes. and changed the <laughs> ice storms, <laughs> adjusting. Ice storms oh. showing up at a venue <laughs> that's going to cost you oh. the earth to be there and to find out that nobody can get there is really scary. Yeah. was there. <laughs> yeah. We showed up. You well, did. you know, the number, the, the number of people oh. that did show up yeah. was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So what I love about Mission yeah. Fest, I mean, I've been, because my dad was on the board and I remember, I have to just say that one of the greatest moments for me was 1998. Yeah. Tony Campolo Tony came Campolo, yeah. and we didn't realize there would be that many people that would come and it was a free event at that yeah. time yeah. so we Still come is. and is, Metro yeah. Toronto Convention Center never knew what hit them because thousands of kids converged and we only had room I think for a thousand yeah. and I remember the security handed me a megaphone and said calm the crowd down so I'm on a megaphone singing as the deer panteth for the water like genteel <laughs> songs to calm the kids because yeah. they were all trying to get in so Everybody. then we had to yeah. go to Dr. Tony Campolo and say Dr. Tony Campolo can you please do a second talk because we have a thousand exactly. kids outside waiting to get in and we can't accommodate so he said yes and then we had to usher in people bring in the other thousand but what a highlight for me because oh, to MC yeah. and to be a part of that yep. excitement and passion from youth to see Tony but also to be in, in see missions I mean we had exactly. thousands of kids going exactly. to see the missions yeah. and the churches and universities that were represented there and to listen to the music and, and listen to all the music yep. and yeah. speakers it's great exciting. To, to see the world-class speakers all uh, coming so back to our them. minds here, <laughs> yeah. where is this available, this whole program, Mission Fest Toronto? The program is distributed right now um, to almost a thousand churches in the whole southern Ontario region. About 700 churches through the Christian Herald, and then our volunteers trot them out all over the place. Yeah. This so is from great London because it, it's the Ottawa. history as well as the menu for this year. Exactly.